Hello, good day. Our topic for today is about information systems in global business today. Computers and information technology are changing every aspect of our lives, from entertainment to shopping, from the work we do and where we do it, to how we communicate with friends and relatives. Some of the key impacts of technology and the implications for management are Business strategy collapsing time and distance, enabling electronic commerce Organization culture encouraging the free flow of information Organization structures making networking and virtual corporations a reality Management processes providing support for complex decision-making process The workplace allowing work from home and on the move what is an information system information system or is can be organized combination of people hardware software communication networks data resources and policies and procedures that stores retrieves transforms and disseminates information in an organization the role of information systems in business today Information systems are essential for conducting day-to-day -day business as well as achieving strategic business objectives. Some firms such as Amazon, E-Trade, eBay, Shopee, and Lazada would be non-existent without information systems. Some service industries such as finance, insurance, and real estate industries could not operate without information systems. Business firms invest heavily in information systems to achieve these six strategic business objectives. Operational efficiency, new products, services and business model, customer and supplier intimacy, better decision making, competitive advantage, and survival. How does information system transform businesses? Wireless communications are keeping managers, employees, customers, suppliers, and business partners connected in every way possible. Information systems and organizations capture and manage data to produce useful information that supports an organization and its employees, customers, suppliers, and partners.
Globalization is a widely discussed topic. It is therefore not all that easy to explain such a complicated term in simple words. Let's start from the beginning with the background to globalization. Advances in technology, such as mobile phones, aeroplanes, telephones and the Internet, have made the growth of transport and communication networks possible. Amongst other things, this means that people and countries can exchange information and goods more quickly and in a less complicated way. This process is called globalization. Globalization comes from GLO Hello. and means the worldwide coming together of countries and nations. Let's look at an example. Companies used to manufacture products in their home countries, just like the companies Profi TV and Supercolor, who produce televisions in country A. Their products are in direct competition with each other, but both companies pay the same salaries and production costs. They have the same customers, use similar suppliers and sell televisions at similar prices. In short, the same conditions apply to both companies. So far, so good. Due to technical, cultural and economic developments that have come about through globalization, other companies which manufacture products under different conditions can now offer their products in country A too. That's why a company from country B can sell televisions here at a lower price because they were produced for less. The local firms Supercolor and Profi TV have to react to withstand the competition. And so the world grows closer together and there is an active exchange of goods between countries. More affordable products are available for more people. However, not only does an exchange of products and economic goods take place, but also of services, knowledge, cultural goods and even languages. All of these individual elements are closely linked and influence each other. But where there is light, there is also shadow. Because of globalization and this intense exchange of goods, people and the environment often suffer. If a company decides to move production to an economically disadvantaged country, people in industrialized countries lose their jobs. At the same time, job opportunities open up to many locals in the economically disadvantaged country. Many people in these countries work for very little money in comparison to those in industrialized countries. Therefore, they often remain poor and more often than not, do not have sufficient insurance, social insurance or health insurance cover. A further disadvantage of globalization is ecological problems such as climate change. The use of aeroplanes, ships and lorries to transport goods over international borders is constantly on the increase. This causes more carbon dioxide to be released into the atmosphere, which, in turn, is the main cause of global warming. Even national environmental standards are ignored. This is a further cost factor in the worldwide international site competition, which should be kept as low as possible to be attractive for a company. There are therefore many sides to globalization, which affect almost all aspects of life, causing me to think that the chain of positive and negative effects will continue to grow further. What's important is to realize that globalization itself is neither good nor bad. It just depends how people deal with all the new possibilities in the future.